Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cuyahoga County Council in the regular meeting for Tuesday. Um, and clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hauser? Mr. Hauser's absent at the moment. Ms. Simon? Here. Ms. Baker? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Tuma? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Here. Ms. Conwell? Here. And Council President Brady? Here. You have a quorum. All right. Pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, is there any public comment related to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President, uh, Reverend Pinkney Butts. All righty. Good evening, I'm Reverend Pamela M. Pinckney Butts. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with me, and anyone who is willing to communicate with me regarding my concerns for these agenda items I am about to recite to you, my phone number is 1216-548-0820. This would include an attorney that would assist me. Item. Resolution number 2018, number 10, nuisance on the properties. I have reported multiple times nuisance and abatement issues with addresses that are in the Cleveland Health Department that still are not addressed, and I'm trying to determine how you are making these decisions when all of my efforts and calls never have been addressed. I would like to know when the public made it known to you all as council members that item number 27 was land no longer needed for public use at 2035 West 18th Street because it has never been given to the public as an option as to whether we want to use it or not. Items number 33, 34, and 38, child care resource which is put into your resolution list three times for starting point. I'd like to know what children are impacted by this, how you made this decision for starting point to be the conduit under which these children are receiving the services. And I notice many items so-called are for children. Why currently, my children currently, and my grandchildren currently, are abused, neglected, and endangered by the Department of Children and Family Services, Health and Human Services, and the resources that are supposed to be providing resources. Item number 35, the newborn home. When I was denied the right to have Laboye water birth because of racism, I'd like to know who and what children, what families are impacted by this newborn home. Moms first. What moms are first? My rights as a woman and a mom are still violated. And I, I just got notice that every time I have my grandchildren with me, Children's Services gets a call to take my grandchildren from my daughter. And they just did it again because of my speaking in a council meeting where I was told to go to the back of the room. Well, the clock hasn't gone backwards in time. I don't go to the back of the bus, and I don't go to the back of the room for anything. Connections, mental health agency, who has had its share of challenges because they do nothing to help the person with the mental health issues but medicate people and only medicate people where the people go to the meetings and all they do is listen to people lecture to them all day and smoke cigarettes and send them back to group homes and do things that are not productive to put people back into society. And I will be coming back for non-agenda items. Anyone else? No, Mr. President. Thank you. 
I have a motion to approve the minutes as printed on the agenda for January the 23rd, so 3rd, 2018. And second. Of the whole and the 20, January 23rd regular meeting has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Um, in the, um, my own announcement, I'd just like to remind everybody that um, we're having the Harvest for Hunger kickoff. The 2018 Harvest for Hunger campaign kicks off this Thursday. Council staff, although small, has raised a significant amount each year to support Greater Cleveland's Food Bank and its partners. Stay tuned for more information about our Harvest for Hunger book fair on February 26th and 27th, raffles and cornhole tournaments for those cornhole fans out there. Um, <laughs> Are there any uh, messages, a message from the county executive? <laughs> yes, thank you, although that's hard to follow. Um, a lot has happened in the last week. Uh, as you know, uh, our chief of staff, Sharon Sobel Jordan, is leaving. Uh, that's sad for the county, uh, but it's a great opportunity for Sharon. Uh, she is going to lead as CEO the uh, Unify Project, which uses big data to attack poverty. Uh, the creators of Unify, by the way, are, are really great entrepreneurs. Um, uh, they are the same people that created Explorus, which has been purchased for a lot of money uh, by IBM. And uh, they, their business was based on big data for healthcare. This is now beyond that in the new business that they're creating. Uh, and today I announced uh, that our new chief of staff will be Shaker Heights Mayor soon to be former chief, uh, former mayor uh, uh, Earl Lycan. Um, many of you know Earl. Uh, he served uh, a decade as Shaker Heights mayor, leading that city, managing uh, the city. He has great management experience. Um, he, uh, uh, before that, served uh, on the Shaker Heights City Council for eight years, uh, so he understands uh, how a uh, council legislative body works. Um, uh, his day job uh, has been as a lawyer and partner at Baker Hostetler. Um, he, uh, in that capacity, he advised businesses on employment matters, uh, so that will also be valuable in this job. Uh, he's had many, many community involvements, including the past president of the Shaker Family Center. He chaired the First Suburbs Consortium. Uh, he's a past executive committee member, a uh, past executive member of the Mayors and Managers Association, past board member of the Senior Transportation Connection and NOACA, so he understands transportation issues. Um, I hope you will all get an opportunity to meet him uh, very soon, um, and uh, he will officially come on board April 1st. Thank you. Thank you very much. Legislation introduced by council, consideration of a resolution of council for first reading adoption under suspension of rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The rules have been suspended. Resolution number 2018-0020, making an award on requisition number 41314 to ZCO Consulting in the amount not to exceed $264,000 for independent verification and validation services in connection with the Enterprise Resource Planning System project for the period February 2nd, 2018 through January 31st, 2020. Move to adopt. <laughs> Seconded Second. by Councilman Tron and Councilwoman Simon. Um, any further discussion? Uh, I just, uh, I'm thrilled that uh, the council is bringing forth a set of eyes and ears uh, because of the of this project having its scope. Uh, this organization that we're bringing uh, forth on this resolution has experience in dealing with uh, uh, matters on public bodies uh, where they have brought on ERP systems and been the eyes and ears for the elected side of the body. Uh, so with that, um, it is just, uh, I think, good uh, fiduciary responsibilities on our part to, uh, to have uh, just another set of checks and balances going forth uh, with this being so instrumental in its impact for every single employee, every single person living in this county, uh, and all the taxpayers. Uh, so I am uh, thrilled that uh, you, as, as our president, has, uh, has seen fit to, to move forward in this direction, and I hope uh, my colleagues will support this. 
Councilwoman? I had an opportunity to meet with the principal of the consulting group and am very um, excited for the company to come in with C to um, actually provide us with the checks and balances that the charter had um, instructed us to do. So I think he's going to be an integral part of making sure this is a success working in partnership with the executive and his administration. Thank you. And just want to remind everybody that this was competitively procured. So. Um, we're looking forward to um, uh, Zig, as he's known, coming on board. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Legislation introduced by the executive consideration of a resolution for first reading adoption or suspension of rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Then moved and seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2018-0021, amending the 2018-2019 biennial operating budget for 2018 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations, for appropriation transfers, and for cash transfers. Move to adopt. Second. Been moved and seconded. Mr. President, my colleagues, this resolution is the regular bimonthly fiscal agenda. Questions were presented to OBM and answered satisfactorily. The questions and answers are on your desk. Highlights of the resolution include appropriation of grants, sin tax debt service, updating of the Veterans Services Fund based on actual year-end numbers, and routine transfers for health and human services programs. The resolution also contains $247,000 for a contract for integration of the ERP and on-base systems and $250,000 for the City of Cleveland Small Business Loan Program in collaboration with the Small Business Administration. I recommend passage on first reading suspension. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Consideration of resolutions for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2018-0022, confirming the county executive's appointment of Sam Thomas to serve on the Western Reserve Area Agency on Aging Board of Trustees for the term January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2020. You refer to the Human Resources Committee? Resolution number 2018-0023, confirming the county executive's reappointment of A. Stephen Dever to serve in his official capacity as representative of Cuyahoga County on the Lake Erie Energy Development Corporation Board of Directors for an unexpired term ending April 30, 2019. Those will also be referred to human resources and appointments. Resolution number 2018-0024, confirming the county executive's reappointment of Lisa M. Hunt to serve on the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities for an unexpired term ending January 31, 2022. Human resources and appointments. Resolution number 2018-0025, confirming the county executive's reappointment of Yvette Itu to serve on the Cuyahoga County Audit Committee for an unexpired term ending December 31, 2021. Also HR and appointments. Resolution number 2018-0026, confirming the county executive's appointment or reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga Regional HIV Health Services Planning Council for various terms as printed on the agenda. Human Resources. Resolution number 2018-0027, authorizing a purchase and sale agreement with DI Rentals in the amount of $7,372 for the sale of certain county-owned property no longer needed for public use, located at 2035 West 18th Street, Cleveland, permit parcel number 0040267. Refer to Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0028, authorizing the county executive to accept dedication of land for Brock Court and West 19th Place in connection with permanent parcel numbers 0040217, 0040209, and an unnumbered parcel located in Duck Island in the city of Cleveland as public streets. Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0029, authorizing the county executive to accept dedication of land for a part of Warrensville Center Road in connection with permanent parcel number 736-29043, located in the city of Shaker Heights as a public street. Public Works. 
Resolution number 2018-0030, authorizing the transfer to Village of Cuyahoga Heights, certain excess county-owned property no longer needed for public use, located east of Interstate 77 at East 71st Street, Cuyahoga Heights, for a public purpose. Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0031, making an award on requisition number 41307 to W.B. Mason Company Incorporated, in the amount not to exceed $2,067,000 for general office supplies and related services for the period April 1, 2018 through March 31, 2021. Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0032, making awards to various municipalities and nonprofit organizations in the total amount of $1,019,698 for various projects in connection with the 2018 Community Development Supplemental Grant Program for the period March 1, 2018 through February 28, 2019 to the entities in the amounts not to exceed and for the programs or projects as listed on the agenda. Referred to Community Development Committee. Resolution. Mr. President. Yes, Councilman. I would like to ask that my name be added as a sponsor, please. Please add Councilman Miller's name as a sponsor. And um, Is there anyone who doesn't want to be added as a sponsor? Please add the Andrew. Council's names. Thank on you. This important legislation spending over a million dollars throughout the county um, by a program initiated by the Council. Resolution number 2018-0033, authorizing a contract with Child Care Resource Center of Cuyahoga County doing business as starting point in the amount not to exceed $2,867,102 for management and administration of the Family Child Care Homes Program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Refer to Education Committee. Resolution number 2018-0034, authorizing a contract with Child Care Resource Center of Cuyahoga County doing business as starting point in the amount not to exceed $1,587,702 for administration and coordination of the Teacher Education and Compensation Help and Early Care and Education Center Capacity Expansion Program and Child Care Resource Referral Program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. That's will be referred to education. Resolution number 2018-0035, authorizing an agreement with Cuyahoga County District Board of Health in the amount not to exceed $914,124 for the newborn home visiting program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. Resolution number 2018-0036, authorizing an agreement with City of Cleveland Department of Public Health in the amount not to exceed $733,890 for administration and coordination of the Moms First Program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. Resolution number 2018-0037, authorizing a contract with Family Connections of Northeast Ohio in the amount not to exceed $500,172 for fiscal and administrative services for the supporting partnerships to assure ready kids program for invest in children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. Resolution number 2018-0038, authorizing a contract with Child Care Resource Center of Cuyahoga County, doing business as starting point, in the amount not to exceed $3,967,986 for management and administration of the Special Needs Child Care Program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. Resolution number 2018-0039, authorizing an agreement with Educational Service Center of Cuyahoga County in the amount not to exceed $2,495,058 for fiscal agent and administrative services for the Bright Beginnings and Parents as Teachers programs for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. And resolution number 2018-0040, authorizing an agreement with Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services Board of Cuyahoga County in the amount not to exceed $1,339,104 for the Early Childhood Mental Health Program for Invest in Children for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2019. Education. 
Committee report and consideration of a resolution for second reading. Resolution number 2018-0010, authorizing the use of a portion of the proceeds of the Cuyahoga County Sales Tax Revenue Bond Series 2014 County Facilities Improvement in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $24 million for the purposes of paying certain costs of demolition of blighted and nuisance properties and making grants, therefore, authorizing other actions related to the use of such proceeds. Move to approve. This is second reading. Second. Oh, I'm President. sorry. Thank you. This item will move to the <coughs> February 27th uh, council agenda for consideration for third reading adoption. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption or suspension of the rules. Could I have a motion to suspend the rules? President. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2017-0180, authorizing an amendment to an agreement with Cleveland Thermal for central heating and cooling services, steam and chilled water, and other related services at various county facilities for the period October 24, 2017 through December 31, 2033, to add steam and chilled water services for the Virgil E. Brown Building, located at 1641 Payne Avenue, Cleveland, effective February 13, 2018. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would ask uh, for a motion uh, to uh, pass this under second reading suspension. Second. And, um, on, uh, just so you know, on uh, January 31st, uh, this came before the Public Works Committee, and uh, we actually had several discussions uh, regarding this uh, with uh, Public Works, including Mr. Dever and Mr. Uh, Reimer. Um, a lot of our, our questions were answered, and it was a thorough discussion. Um, basically centering around whether or not to uh, do this in-house or to uh, um, work with Cleveland um, uh, Thermal. And uh, when all was said and done, uh, we agreed to move forward with the contract that the uh, administration has requested. And so I would ask for uh, uh, moving this on second reading suspension. Thank you. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I too, was a member of the, the hearing process. Uh, I will support this this evening. But uh, as my colleague has commented on, uh, I'm concerned when, uh, when we are giving up uh, long-term commitment uh, that we would be using our own technology and our own opportunity to can be in-house and improve it. Uh, we have signed up for a long-term commitment to a third party. Uh, we are at least going to be able to get, uh, I believe, any value if this uh, would be extended beyond the current lines uh, we've uh, been able to negotiate that should we pick up any uh, the cost to extend it uh, that uh, should that extension go further uh, we will be able to at least pick up some benefit uh, we are going to be giving up the ability as technology improves and, uh, and i know some of my colleagues uh, and I do support the use of uh, advanced technology as we go along. We will be giving that up because uh, all those benefits will be going to uh, uh, Cleveland Thermal. Great organization, well done. Uh, but by the same token, uh, we as, as an organization have, have chosen to go down a path where we're going to be relying on a third party as opposed to ourselves. Thank you. Any other comments, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0019, making an award on requisition number 41056 to Tarek Roofing Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $3,068,857 for the Virgil E. Brown Building Roof Replacement Project. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, Mr. President, uh, on uh, January 31st, uh, um, members of the Public Works Department came before the uh, uh, committee and uh, with respect to this legislation, I would ask for my uh, colleague's support on moving this through with second reading suspension. Um, this is a um, uh, complete uh, tear off and replacement of the roof. Um, it does come with a 30 year warranty on uh, wind, hail, and um, I believe it says puncture damage. I'm trying to read my writing here. Uh, and a 20 year warranty uh, for the uh, seams on the uh, skylights. So. Um, it's the lowest and best bidder here, and uh, it's uh, something that needs to be done in this building to preserve it for the, for the long term. Um, I do know that during the discussions, we also talked uh, with Public Works about trying to continue to main maintain uh, uh, environmental consciousness with respect to uh, anything they can do in the, in the long run with, uh, regarding um, um, the solar panels that we had discussed uh, uh, in prior uh, meetings. So uh, with that, I would ask for uh, my uh, colleagues' uh, support on this. 
Say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Consideration of ordinances for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2018-0001, providing for modifications to and adoption of the Cuyahoga County Human Resources Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual to be applicable to all county employees. This will be referred to Human Resources. Ordinance number 2018-0002, enacting Title 13, Chapter 1301 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish the Cuyahoga County Consumer Protection Code, amending Section 202.16A7 of the Cuyahoga County Code to clarify the duties and responsibilities of the Department of Consumer Affairs, Division of Consumer Protection. This will be referred to Education, Environment, and Sustainability. Ordinance number 2018-0003, enacting Title 13, Chapter 1302 of the Cuyahoga County Code to establish the Cuyahoga County Weights and Measures Code. This will also be referred to Education, Environment, and Sustainability as a kind of companion item there. Um, any miscellaneous committee reports? Mr. President, uh, my colleagues, finance and budget will meet one week from Monday on February 26th at 1 p.m. to conclude our work on the ERP quarterly update and the review of the 2017 results of operations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Public Works will meet on uh, Wednesday, January, I'm sorry, February 21st at its regularly scheduled time. Okay. Mr. President, I don't have a committee, so in light of all the legislation for education, they're more than, they meet right after, they're more than welcome to use the one o'clock slide slide if they need. The Community Development Committee will meet Thursday, February 22nd to deal with the items referred to committee today. And that's because Monday is a holiday? That's correct. Okay. <coughs> I think the, uh, H, the HR committee is going to meet at its regularly scheduled time, which is February the 20th, uh, Tuesday at 10 o'clock. For the rest of the month, right? And, and, and likely for the rest of the month, yes. We'll, we'll be in, introducing a, the new manual, so it'll be exciting. All right. Thank you. Okay, so a lot of items scheduling for Education Environmental Committee, and our regularly scheduled meeting is the 20. First at three, if we can change um, the time, I'll talk to the president, but we are entertaining, I think, eight contracts, um, and I'll probably schedule the consumer affairs legislation for March 21st, but if there's time to get it in um, earlier on the February 21st, we'll do that with an overview, but for sure, I want to dedicate March 21st to consumer affairs. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Any miscellaneous business? Anybody got anything they want to bring up? No? Any public comment unrelated to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President, several um, citizens would like to address council. All First right. being Reverend Pinkney Butts. Good evening, everyone. Once again, I'm Reverend Pamela on Pinkney Butts. I want to first um, speak on behalf of our public transportation, the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority. And I want to say to each of you who may be listening that you must speak up because in March you will have cuts, route cuts, and fares will increase. This will impact people who work two and three jobs. This will impact people who are rich, poor, and middle class. This will impact our youth. Speak up so the transportation system is not cut. I have been asking multiple times, where is our money? Nobody wants to give me that answer. One of the governors had allocated some funding. Ted Strickland, Mr. Budish. Well, the current governor took the money and put it who knows where. Just like the rainy day money fund that he's been holding in the city of East Cleveland and the cities that have black people as leaders. I wanna know what's going on around here. I also 
I want to say to you this evening, I am in direct opposition to that $3.9 million tax levy to allocate funding to the Department of Health and Human Services and the social service agencies. One reason being is because I am currently being abused and was told by Children's Services that the only way they would come in my life is my children and I would be portrayed negatively. Cuyahoga County sends stuff across jurisdictional boundaries to other cities, states, and counties portraying me negatively so I don't have a safe place to live in the United States of America, which is my hometown. The third point, case in point, I'd like to know why the chairwoman for the Cuyahoga County Board of Elections is absent and won't be available until the board meeting and has refused to address my missing ballots and my rights being invited in the electoral process. And I want that addressed. Uh, Prosecutor Michael O'Malley, I need your assistance because the council members are not available to answer the phone and investigations are not being done in reference to my safety. I'm asking you, and I called your office, as well as the safety of my children and now my grandchildren. I just got assaulted again on a bus, and my home is being broken into. And when I file complaints, they're being ignored. I do need your assistance. And I am a registered voter, and I'm not giving up and backing up my right and my freedom to vote. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lynn Solomon. Hello. Um, thank you to all the county council members for allotting time and listening to my comments. My name is Lynn Solomon, and I am a member of Clevelanders for Public Transit. I want to thank you all, first of all, for creating a standing committee on public transit. I have used public transportation as my sole form of transportation for the past four years and for a total of 24 years during the 40 years that I have lived in the Cleveland area. From 1976 to 1996, I had no concerns. RTA was a great mode of transportation. But since I have returned to using public transportation as my sole form of transportation four years ago, I have been very, very concerned about the service and the cost of the fares. I have heard what's going on referred to as a death spiral, and that is a very appropriate term. There has been a vicious cycle that has been going on for a number of years involving service cuts and fare hikes which may very well be accelerating this spiral. We know that cuts are coming March 11th to the service of the buses. And I heard that these cuts are just the first 20%. And then in August, the fares go up. And there are more cuts projected for the fall. Unless RTA gets some significant funding I can't see how RTA can continue to provide decent service at a fair price. The cost is already too high and the service just gets less and less. Public transportation is the form of transportation of the future. And Cleveland and Cuyahoga County, they really got to realize this. We cannot keep on thinking that we can all be individual people in our own individual cars going here, there, and everywhere. We need to do it in mass. And the way to do that is through RTA. Let's keep RTA going. Let's not let it go down the drain. Thank you. Thank you. Is Next, there anyone else? Just, yes, Mr. Rich Raphael. Good evening, Mr. President, Mr. County Executive, members of council. My name is Rich Raphael, and I'm here today representing Clevelanders for Public Transit. We as an organization would like to extend our thanks to Council President Brady, to Mr. Miller, 
and Mrs. Conwell for the fine work that they have led in this body to date regarding public transit. We would also like to express our sincere gratitude to Council for their commitment to continue the critically important work that that subcommittee started by having a standing committee in this building where we can continue to have meaningful dialogue concerning public transit issues. The message that I have to put before you today is that we remain gravely concerned about this death spiral of cuts and hikes, cuts and hikes, cuts and hikes. According to the Transit Workers <coughs> Union Local, every time there's a service cut, RTA loses 11% of their ridership. They lose riders, they cut more service, the fare goes up and round and round we go. RTA's leadership has said publicly to the ATU that they're not comfortable putting anything on the ballot in terms of a tax levy until November 2019. That's two cuts from now. After one cut has already been made, that could lead to potential loss of one-third of RTA's total ridership. We're asking council, please take notice of this. We cannot afford to wait until the temporary relief money that the state has sent to, to, to RTA runs out before we deal with this. By that time, we fear that the system will be a mere skeleton of what it once was. Cuts and hikes are the wrong direction. We understand there's a budget crisis, but RTA has known about the loss of the MCO tax pending for two years. And as far as we see, except for going down to the regularly scheduled transit lobby day in Columbus once a year, they haven't done anything visible to look for local options. We hope and we pray that something gets put on the ballot by the end of the year. Sales tax might be one thing, but it fluctuates with the economy. If we go into a recession, the sales tax go down. We need something more stable than that. And we would submit the possibility of property tax or some type of commuter tax may work better. We will also be back before you at your next meeting to talk about some plans for a vision we see for RTA's future that we think make good sense and we'll ask you to consider at that time. I thank you very much for your time today, ladies and gentlemen. And if I may extend a quick congratulations to Councilman Hauser before I sit down because I couldn't make your swearing in. Last time, congratulations, sir, and we look forward to working with you as well. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. Final speaker is Ms. Liu. Ms. Liu. Good evening. Good evening. Um, first thing I would like to say is to what happened just a little bit before 5 p.m., before this meeting started. For some strange reason, uh, right now the building has automatic lock or whatever. It seems like they locked down the whole building. I was not the only one, and, and myself and other people trying to come into the building, we couldn't get in. We had to wait for other people to come out in order for us to go through the doors. So I'm not sure which department uh, should take care of that, but I know the county council meeting at 5 p.m. is a regular thing, unless, unless we get into baseball season. <laughs> so <laughs> the second thing is, um, we just had a homeless congress meeting last, uh, the second Thursday this month, and we realized the promising new service provider completely has no information from the current service provider in OHS that having Overflow space will be very essential to help the people in the shelter out. To tell you the truth, last month we had an incident. The result was the blood was everywhere. The type of fight we had, none of the staff member would dare to help to separate the people. We only had a Supposedly, we were supposed to have one police officer, but unfortunately, that particular time frame, there was no officer actually come in uh, as the off-duty Cleveland police officer. 
And actually, the past Sunday, we had another incident. This time, we did have an um, off-duty officer there to help out. He used a very good technique trying to separate people without touching them. It was also a fight in the laundry room, on the floor, roll over everywhere. We really need overflow space. The reason I came here, I started coming here, that's because current service provider didn't think these are important. If they don't think the real life people is important, what can we do? Should we just fight for death or being murdered in the shelter? For something just because emotionally people cannot stand the environment? Their mental health issue has not been taken care of? That's really not fair. The other thing is about this transportation issue. The so-called dead spiral is not just a hike and cuts. Actually, I would say they already knew the ridership would be down. Of course, homeless people right now have no way to, to fight anything about it. But right now, middle class is getting the hit. When they change the frequency from March 11th, you will have a very big risk to be late at work all the time. That means they will lose a job. They won't be able to pay their rent or paying their mortgage. Our recession will start all over again in this region. We need help. Please, thank you. Thank you. Is that it? All right. Well, if there's no further business for the County Council, we are adjourned. <laughs>